What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Voice of the Giants podcast here on WKCV, the voice of Keystone College. Guys, this week joined in the studio by none other than Men's Lax representative. Haven't had Men's Lax on in a while. Number three, Gabe Reyes. Gabe, how are you doing today, man? I'm good, JT. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. I'm fantastic. And this is a little bit long overdue for us because it's been a minute since I've done Men's Lax. And honestly, I gotta say, you guys haven't been doing that bad and everything like that, clicking as a team and everything like that. Like, the team atmosphere has been so underrated, to be honest with you. And it's funny, so... The team culture really has changed over the years. I mean, when I came in... Well, we've always been a a smaller size team, lower on numbers, but every year it's been a tight group, a tight family aspect, family vibe. And this year's been... Very, very tight. We have an addition of six to seven soccer players, and they bring in a completely different, I don't want to say vibe, but vibe, really, mindset, aspect, perspective on the sport than I've ever seen. And it really makes us come together as a team and a family like better than almost ever before. And it's almost like a new energy as well. It really is. Oh, and like that's the other thing I was going to bring up. Obviously, this year, beginning of the year, we looked at the roster and everything like that. Uh, it wasn't going to be the biggest. But then you had the soccer players come up and everything. And like you said, it's just been a completely new energy and everything like that. Uh, and I mean, the one thing that you bring up, and I'll again, I'll let you elaborate this a little bit more. Whether you get guys who come in and play lacrosse, whether you get guys who come in and play soccer, the one thing that never dies on that men's lax team. And I've been working with you guys for about three years now, and I've been fortunate enough to see this. Every single time, it's the same thing. Family. He, and that never dies with you guys from what I've seen. So I'll let you elaborate on that more, man. I mean, I think it's not only just like a men's lacrosse thing. It's like a Keystone thing. All Keystone athletics, like, we are all. Like, I feel like we're all one big family and we all want to see each team succeed and each player on each team succeed. And for us, I mean, these soccer guys just came in and they took by the bull by the horns and they have loved it. They have had fun out there. They're, they never even played this sport before. Never even, they didn't even know what lacrosse was, some of them. And they're out there trying to have as much fun as possible. And it really, their enthusiasm rubs off on players like me and Isaiah and Tyler and any other player who had played before. They make us have more fun because they don't know what they don't know. They're just out there having a good time. And it really just makes it all a good time for everybody. And the scary thing about that is we talk about, like, gameplay and everything like that we talk about scheduling and everything like that a team that's out there having fun and starting to pick this up and picking it up well is a very deadly team to go up for against in the schedule and that's something that I guess you could say the men's team hasn't really had in a while no I wouldn't say so because every year we've had a a fair amount of players who at least had played before or players who who hadn't the players who hadn't played before had an idea of what the sport was and and could get get it kind of easily. This year, they don't really know what they don't know. Like I said, and they're just out there having a good time. They're out, they're just they're shooting the ball, hitting the people. They're having fun. They don't know they can hit people. They, they you cannot hit people in this sport. Absolutely, you can hit people. What are you talking about? Lay someone out. Have a great time. They're out there having fun. So I think that will really, hopefully at least, translate onto the field in games, and they can just have fun and hopefully express it by winning games. Yeah, hundred percent. And the other thing that makes it hilarious is the fact of the matter like i said this will easily make that make you guys sleeper and i assume for you guys and before we hop into the schedule i assume having these guys as like sleepers and nobody really knowing what to expect from these guys that's kind of an advantage for you guys in a way it really is because this is the first year at least when i've been here in the last four years that we weren't ranked last in the conference we were ranked sixth out of seventh and I think that is kind of a slight sleeper aspect to that. Um, these guys, they're always talking about their celebrations, whether they're after a goal, and that's some enthusiasm that I really haven't seen at Keystone since I was a freshman because it's always been from the lacrosse players. They're just trying to get the work done, get the jobs done, and these guys are just out here having fun, trying their best to just, like I, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but have fun, have a good time, and score a lot of goals and hopefully win some games. No, absolutely. And the one thing that I find hilarious, and the playoff format usually stays the same and everything like that. And I know, getting ahead it completely and everything like that. We obviously, we know who the three teams that are probably going to make it in. Yes. Stockton, Keene, Montclair. Right. Or, and those fo- those three, mm-hmm. always in the top five for yes. rankings. And that's nothing you can do on that. But at the right, same right. time, usually top four teams make it in. And yes. it doesn't take a lot to get in. But nonetheless, but nonetheless... Who knows? Obviously wishing you guys the best of luck. And let's talk on the season. And obviously for the first time in a while, you guys are actually getting a legitimate season. Now what I mean by a legitimate season is you both get both conference games and non-conference games. Last year, didn't necessarily get that. It was conference only. 
He stayed within and everything like that. This year, you finally get those non-conference games back and everything like that. You get Wills to open it up. Let's start off with opening day because this is a very special season for you. This is your senior season. Right. So it was funny. I was actually talking to one of the alums the other day, uh, Nick Vasquez, who was uh, our goalie. And he – I brought it to his attention. I've only played 21 games in my career. I'm in my fourth year, and I've only, I've only played nine games in the last two years, three because of COVID in 2020 and then the sixth last year, you mentioned, in the conference-only games. So it's it's really kind of weird to to feel like you're actually playing a full season again, and it's like you can actually just play again. But as for the Wells game, that's a game I'm really excited for because they were the first team I've ever played in college. I played them my first game ever. We lost 13-9 to at home uh, in 2019. And it's kind of – it's funny to come full circle. Like, you know, you played them then and now you're playing them again. And our, it's a funny – again, our second game of the season is at Centenary. And they – again, we went there my freshman year. So it's kind of like it's, – it's all coming back to your first season. You had a, your only full season you had and now you're having another full season and you're playing the same teams similarly again. You're playing at the same places again. And it's kind of it, – it's weird that it's come to this. And it's also kind of hilarious because you also look at the schedule. It's almost like they copied and pasted the entire schedule. It really schedule. is. Yeah, it kind of does look like that. And it's it's funny you bring up Centenary because Centenary was actually a former CSAC team and everything like that. And you guys get to go ahead, you get to reset and face that former conference rival and everything like that. What is it like going up against a former conference rival? More or less just a reset for you in that matter. It's weird because I got so used to playing Centenary because... It, they're more of an even team with us. They're not like the, the Stocktons or the Keens and the Montclair State. And that's no disrespect to Centenary in any way. But they are more even with us. We only lost uh, by eight points to them last year. And it's that's a fun rivalry because it's one where we hope we can hang in there with them and keep the game competitive. Where last year, at least, at halftime, it was 3-1. It was very competitive, that game. That game was extremely close. And it was hard and nitty-gritty. And... Playing them again this year, we're playing at Setner, unfortunately, but I'm fine going there. Hopefully we can keep that game close and as intense as we have in the past, but playing a team that we're so familiar with that's out of conference is kind of a weird thing to think because I honestly, I'm kind of missing them in the conference. I always liked playing them all the time. So I'm, I'm glad, at least for my senior year, I have to play them one more time. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, that's the other reason why it's another good way to get some of these non-conference games going and everything like that because... You get to face the teams you haven't faced in a while, like Marywood, obviously, 10 minutes up the road, not even, and everything like that. You got Purchase College, who we see every once in a while in mm-hmm. lacrosse and everything like that. So, obviously, seeing these guys and everything like that uh, is going to mean something a little bit more. And right. I want to talk on that that Purchase, di- uh, that purchase matchup, mm-hmm. because that's going to be senior day. Yes. How emotional is that going to be for you? For, so for me personally, I think it'll be emotional, but at the same time, as after I graduate from Keystone, I'm going to be a graduate assistant for a mental cross program somewhere in preferably D3, somewhere. And so for me, it's like my like my career isn't over, but it is over. So I'm still going to be involved with the sport, but it won't be the same. I won't be laced up the cleats, and I won't be putting the helmets on or the gloves on, and and the moments that I miss won't necessarily be the big games. It won't be, oh my goodness, you're going against this guy this week. Oh yeah, this matchup, we're going to take him away. Don't. It won't be that. It, the moments I'll miss will be stretching with the guys and talking about our days. Messing around. Playing in lines with each other. In line drills. I'm, I'm in the back of the line and I'm just talking to the guys. Having fun. Doing little drills like that. The little things and the moments I will miss. So when it hits me on senior day when I walk on the field, I don't think I'll cry. I think it'll be very emotional. Uh, but it's different. I'm not like every other player who just the career's over and it's over. I still get to go on and coach, luckily, and at least hopefully I'll be able to coach. And so while it will be emotional, it won't be the end of the world for me, at least. No, absolutely. And I trust me, I can attest to that feeling. I had my senior day for track and everything like that. It's definitely a different feeling going from coaching to um to or being an athlete to going to coaching. Speaking of coaching, glad we got on this mm-hmm. is Coach Caps, Coach Caps, his first year yes. in the program, obviously had a couple of coaches before this. But mm-hmm. the one thing when we had media day and everything like that, that I saw at a bre- at, that I hadn't seen in a while, is a coach with a passion and a coach that's yes. willing to win. What What is his mentality and just everything being with him 
been like over the past couple months. So it's funny. Coach Caps is my third coach in four years. I had I had Coach Joe Adato for my freshman first semester, and then I had Coach Justin Ross up until now, and, and now I obviously have uh, Coach Brad Caps. Coach Caps is, is so interesting because he really has brought back my enthusiasm to play the game of lacrosse. He really makes it fun. Because we're out there, and he understands the situation we're in. He understands the predicament we're in with soccer players and the numbers of the guys we have out there. And he just makes it extremely enjoyable. He's extremely intelligent and knows exactly what he wants and how to get to it. But the issue that we've run into, like I said, as soccer players, is the lack of, of people playing the sport and the numbers we have. But yet he's able and so far been able, managed to make it work. He's done a fantastic job of incorporating basic drills into with the more complex college level drills so that the guys are understanding the sport at the same time learning and playing at an efficient level to give us chances to win this year. And I don't know many of the coaches that could have done it the way he's doing it. No, absolutely. And again, the thing that I've been saying about Coach Caps, passion. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen it around in right. a while. Right. Oh, and it's something that has been just unbelievable, seriously. Mm-hmm. He, I, Seriously, I can't explain it. Really, it's been fantastic to have around. Um, I wrapping up and everything like that. I want to go ahead. I want to talk on the season one more time. Okay, I talked about it before. Yeah, it's your senior season. Right. If you really think about it, this is your what's it called obviously fourth year here and everything like that. Yeah. At got two shortened seasons uh-huh. and a long season. Right. How does it feel to actually f- know that this year finally? You're finishing off the proper way. You're finishing off on an actual long season with non-conference and, see, right. and conference games. For me, it's it's nice to kind of come to an end because, well, mentally, I, I'm kind of tired of of playing. I mean, not physically. I'm just kind of mentally. I'm I'm more tired. I'm ready to to call it, to not call it quits, but to be ready to be done. And I know certain athletes feel that way when they get to their point in their career where they don't want to do the little things to be good or be great at this level, and you need to be able to do those little things to be able to play at this level. But so for me, with the having the 10 games is super amazing because I'm a big statistic guy. I'm a huge statistic guy. And my freshman year I had, with the 12 games I played, I had 19 cost turnovers. Last year, third my three-game year of the COVID season, I went one cost turnover. And then last year I had 14 and six games. So for me, this is it. This is my year. I got 10 games. I'm at the best I've ever been. And here's my opportunity to play at my best level and to hopefully, crossing fingers, we're going to break the, the school record for college turnovers in a career, which is at 54. I am currently at 34. So we need 21 in 10 games, which is about two and a half. Uh, math isn't great, but I believe it's two and a half. So that's the goal there. That is, that is my goal is to win a lot of games, have a lot of fun, break that record, and sayonara, hang the jersey in the rafters, and go home some with my head held high, proud of my career. Absolutely, man, absolutely. You know I'm wishing you nothing but the best. And I assume once you hit that field March 19th Heath, against Wells mm-hmm. at home, I feel like everything's going to just change for you. The attitude's going to change. It's going to be showtime. we all fun. Oh, absolutely, man. And obviously, per usual, I want to thank you for coming in, man. Thank Seriously. you, JC, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. want to wish you the best of luck on your season, dude. dude and guys... That's going to go ahead and wrap it up for us here at Voice of the Giants. And guys, take it easy, and we will talk to you all later.